said that he felt Victorino was tired during the timeout. Coach Baby Dalupa did give uh, Victorino a timeout. Well, like a coach, Freddie being a coach, you know that a team usually doesn't win the ball game here in the second quarter, you know. So it's very good to give your good players a rest, and they'll come back strong in the second half. Ricardo Brown is back in the game, and Atoy Paul just shot one right in his eye. Frank Lim returning to the bench. Victorino, 10 points in the first quarter. Also, six rebounds, four and two. It is now a three-point game, still great taste. Atoy Paul has got his game back on track. He's virtually unstoppable. We have five minutes here in the second quarter. Box Adunado is open. And Kidaben, strong off the defensive boards, pulling down his seventh rebound. Pearson gets his first basket tonight. That's right. And you know, Coach Bernardo recalls Cristobal from the scorer's bench because even though Brown is in the game right now, he can't really risk Cristobal coming in because Pearson and Atoy are playing well as guards for him. It is a 10-0 blast by the Red Manises, and this is the reason why it is now a one-point game. Alonor tempted to take it from 18. All of a sudden, the percentage from the floor of the coffee makers have gone sour. Keep in mind that the Red Manizers really have closed the gate on Ricky Brown. Ricky Brown has not had any easy shots, but Atoiko, he turns the ball over, Offensive he poses a shot. Ball. Offensive foul called against Atoiko. That is his first personal foul tonight. Well, he found himself squeezed in by two people. He still wanted to go for the basket. Adornado is not being replaced. Arnie Twadle sees action for the first time. That's true. By the way, calling all members of class 1935 in Dang Rural High School. You are hereby requested to attend a meeting on December 26th at 10 in the morning at the residence of Mrs. Nata Alas Panganiban in Indang Cavite to finalize the souvenir program for your Golden Jubilee on March 31, 1985. Ricky Brown, he attacks the basket. I tell you, this guy has got unlimited potential. He can distribute the ball. He can give player directions. These are some of the factors that uh, has actually uh, given him a lot of respect coming from his teammates and also Coach Baby Dalupin. Victorino returns to the game as Coach Baby D recalls Carpio in the second foul. Coming from Atoy Ko, just placed the Red Manizers in penalty situation with four minutes and four seconds to go here in the second. You know, up to this point there, we have Willis coming in for Billyamin. Up to this point, I feel that the coaches, both of them are really doing a hell of a job. You know, their timing is perfect from my point of view and, you know, the way they're substituting is really proper. We have an infraction, Victorino crossed the line. So I tell you, you're talking of the guys that made the mythical fight. That's Atoy Kor, Ricky Brown riding on him, and Victorino riding on Abed Gidaben. That's a lot of talent on the floor. And Pearson... We even have the Rookie of the Year there. Exactly. And also Philip Cesar, the other member of the mythical fight. Uh, well... Willis just got his 19th point after making 12 in the first quarter. Ball movement coming from the coffee makers. Here's Victorino. Up he goes. He's jammed. He was too much under. He got the number. This is now our fifth deadlock. Inside to Kidabin. Pearson is open. Short. Well, Alan really Norris skies. Right, partner. It really wasn't a well-loaded shot. He took it up in a hurry. Gidabin is again controlling the defensive rebounds for Chris Pine. That's very important to their fast game. And right now he has pulled down 10 defensive rebounds. Sessa is shot blocked by Collins. But Willis was right there. Good positioning for his 21st point. And we now find the Red Manizers in front by a basket. And not only that, he got a foul from... Uh, Collins. What a way to go. An opportunity loss was an opportunity gain, and we've got the timeout this time coming from the Red Masters. Minutes, as a matter of fact, they did not convert for five minutes and 16 seconds. And if Willis completes his three-point play, it's going to be a 15-to-1 blast posted here by the Red Manizers. And Willis now has got 22 points, made 12 during the first. Collins, 19 points. Let's go to the uh, first quarter stats. You'll see that the Red Manizers, they outshot the Great Taste team percentage-wise. But the Great Taste team, they out-rebounded the club of Crispa. Again, the Great Taste team always had heavy high on assist. Ricardo Brown on a side shot. Kidabin coming out. Victorino following him. Ricardo Brown trying to help out. 
inside to Willis. Alolor is there, took it away. Collins picking it up. Great is looking for the lead right now. We can see Cristobal on his car's bench. Ato is really tired. And Brown has been able to get some uh, plays away from him. No? But it out by Pearson and Cristobal checking in for Atoy call. Atoy was super in the second quarter. Eight big points and one defensive rebound. Tell you, partner, I think this is the first time that I really have seen Ricky Brown really struggling to take a shot off. He's not even got the ball in his hands. They're not giving him any, any time to be able to get that basketball. Quick release coming from Ricardo Brown. Here is Cesar looking downstairs. Pearson being met by Quadless. Slip through his hand, but fail safe. It is Cristobal. Posting low is Willis. Collins comes in to help from the weak side. Good defense there. A minute and 45. Kidabin from outside. Well, that's not his shot, really, although he is pretty accurate from about 15 feet down. Still, you'd like to see him take a shot underneath the basket. Great day, trailing by one. Their biggest lead, 11 points. Score stood at 47, 36. And then they were quiet for 5 minutes and 16 seconds. Ricardo Brown only had one basket in the first quarter, but right here in the second, he has pumped in an additional 9 points. Incidentally, the public is invited to an Atiatian Festival competition from December 17 to 23 at the Robinsons Commercial Complex. Cesar gets fouled by Collins, and that will be the second personal foul called against Collins, oh, but also a great taste in penalty situation with a minute and seven seconds to go. Again, as I mentioned earlier, on defense, you can never turn your back to that basketball. There was a time that uh, Jeff Collins had his back to it. There was a lob pass to Phillip, got him by surprise, and got part of the hand of Phillip, so he goes to the line for two, making his first. That's very true, uh, Freddy. If you see, if you watch a lot of NBA basketball games, you know, players eventually learn how to play defense. They keep their eyes on their man and at the same time on the ball. And, you know, the coaches really get mad at you if they get a pass to you for a guy cutting into the three-second area from the weak side, you know. Philip Cesar had a great night in game number three last Thursday. had 18 points, eight rebounds, four assists, one steal, and one shot block. Three errors for Philip Cesar, the scholar, and he just got his third personal foul. And they are in penalty situation. That will mean two fouls, uh, two free throws for Ricardo Brown. Tell you, one of the things that you cannot do is to foul Ricky Brown. That guy's so hot in the free throw line, it's like you start to begin to play with fire. Well, I can believe that if he can hit one from 23 feet and up, you know, from 15 feet without a guy guarding him, his percentage must be at least 80-something percent, you know. So, great taste coffee, courtesy of Ricardo Brown, back in the driver's seat by a single point, 54, 53. We have 48 here in the second quarter, 14 on the shot clock. Back again to Mike Cristobal, going to Willis. Nice pass going to Cesar, who completes the play. You know, that time that Mike Cristobal got that ball, Andy, it just shows you the, how important it is to keep your dribble. He dribbled the ball, and he was too far away from the basket to stop dribbling. They doubled on him. There, there's a great interception coming from uh, the guard, and he goes straight to the hoop. Well, there was a pre entered foul by Quadless, which wasn't called by the referees. And then Alolor finally fouled Gidab and he gave him the hit. Foul, let's see if Alolor. we caught that on our slow-mo. There's a foul by Twadless, it wasn't called. Alolor pushes Gidaben as he's up in the air where he's light as a feather, as they say. Well, Andy, I agree with the referees for not calling the PMP yes. foul because that was a sure opportunity already. So why punish and recall it? However, in the ensuing movement, Alolor came into view. And, it, and he pushes Gidaben when Gidaben's up in the air. Fantastic of the defensive rebounds. He's got 10 playing with one personal foul. Yeah, something to watch in this ball game are the big guys. You know, they can dribble coast to coast. That was a clear example of how Abbott Gidaben has improved in this game. Ah, certainly, uh, Freddie, that's why he improved, because he improved on his dribble compared to when he started in 72, you know, when he was with the ABC team. He was really a young uh, player at the time, couldn't really dribble that much, but now. Sometimes they even joke he likes to be a guard at 6'5". 19 seconds to go. Great these coffee makers, they're trailing by one. They could take back the driver's seat. Quadless to Ricardo Brown. He threw it way beyond the reaches of Ricardo. No way to get that possession. Error on Arnie. Definitely. 